Hi friends, it's Miss Hera. Today we are going to be reading a story called The Smallest Girl in the Smallest Grade. Okay, so can you see her down here? So she's the smallest girl and we can tell that because we're looking at the front cover and we can see that she is the smallest. See, all of her friends are taller than her. This must be her teacher, okay? The smallest girl in the smallest grade. Hmm, I'm thinking, what do you think is the smallest grade? Hmm, I bet we'll find out. The smallest girl in the smallest grade, written by Justin Roberts, illustrated by Christian Robinson. Hardly anyone noticed young Sally McCabe. Hmm, can you spot her in this picture on the playground? Sally McCabe? She was the smallest girl in the smallest grade. <clears throat> sure, her name could be heard in the daily roll call and she marched with her books down the same school hall. But hardly anyone noticed young Sally McCabe. And they certainly didn't know, or at least didn't mention, that Sally was paying super extra special attention. To the abandoned kite with the tangled string, to the 27 keys on the janitor's ring, to the leaves as they turned green to gold in the fall, to the time Tommy Torino tripped in the hall. Here she is watching. She watched as the wildflowers tipped toward the light and heard the howl of a hound dog late one night. She was there when the stray cats, who normally fought, conducted a meeting in the church parking lot. She saw Kevin McEwen get pushed off a slide and the oncoming tears that he wanted to hide. He doesn't look like he's being very nice. And she'll never forget that parent-teacher day when Billy's much larger father suddenly dragged him away. But through all the mean words and all the cold stares, no one even noticed that Sally was there. And they certainly didn't know, or at least didn't mention, Sally was paying super extra special attention. She'd seen how a whisper could make someone cower, like a bulldozer crushing through fields of wildflowers, and it kept piling up this discarded debris, those beautiful kites tangled in trees. So on February 3rd at 11.29, Sally stepped straight up out of the lunchroom line. I wonder what she's going to do. She said, I am tired of seeing this terrible stuff. Stop hurting each other. This is enough. Now a few laughed out loud or didn't care that there was some girl with her hand in the air. But then something super extra special happened that day as Howard O'Henry suddenly set down his tray. Like waves rolling in one after another, first Molly rose up, then Michael's twin brother. It was Tyrone and Terrence, then Amanda and Paul who pushed out their chairs and stretched their arms tall. From the friendly lunch lady with the dishes she carted to that new third grade teacher who had recently started. Yes, everyone there, even Principal Claire, had joined little Sally with their finger in the air. And though hound dogs were destined to howl at night, and most stray cat meetings would end up as fights, 
and kites would continue to get stuck in trees, they all felt, for a moment, like the janitor's keys. Fastened together with a heavy steel ring that held all the secrets to unlock everything. As the world returned to the way that it was, Sally noticed the difference, as she usually does, when Billy paused briefly to open the door for Mrs. O'Connell and 17 more. Or when Molly scooched over to make some space on the coral riser for Ellen and Grace. These moments that often get taken for granted, a wildflower appearing that no one had planted. The swings soon resumed their rhythm and sway, and day turned to night, and night turned to day. People remembered and would quite often mention that Sally had been paying super extra special attention. And how the world could transform and a change could be made by the smallest girl in the smallest grave. The end. So Sally... Even though she was the smallest, she made a big impression because she could change the world. She saw that people weren't being kind. She saw that people were not treating other people nicely and that they weren't doing what they were supposed to on the playground and not treating their toys the right way. And she said, mm, enough. It's got to stop. We have to be kind. We have to follow directions. We have to treat everyone with kindness. And just because she was the smallest doesn't mean that she couldn't make a difference. Happy reading, friends!